Hello, in this Flash ActionScript 3 tutorial that's accompanied by a free source file, we're learning how to dynamically program the data grid component and make special customizations to it to make it look and render the way we need it to. Let's click on Create New ActionScript 3 File and we'll adjust the size of the stage to 680 by 340 should be a good size and the first thing I'm going to do is place my little background graphics let's give it a rounded edge 1.5 that should be good and let's make it a nice dark blue Okay. Now I'm going to lock that layer, create a new layer, and call this my task text. That's all that's going to be on that layer. And now the Action Script 3 layer. That's where we're going to have our Action Script 3. On the task text layer, let's create a dynamic text field by clicking the text tool make sure dynamic text is set it's going to be multi-line selectable aligned left bold 16 16 point now let's name it task underscore txt that's going to display the choice when the user clicks one of our data grid items, the choice is going to be placed into that text, this text field here. And now we can go ahead into the Action Script 3 layer. Well, before we do that, let's grab the data grid out, drag it to stage, and then just press Control X. And that's a good way to get the component assets into your library and the component itself because it needs to be in the library before we start coding it out if you want to bring it in dynamically like we're going to show you how to do or render it dynamically on stage okay now we're going to import the data grid control we're going to create some items now that are going to be inserted into our data grid you can have as many as you like. And these objects are going to be multi-dimensional arrays of sorts. So we open the curly brace, close the curly brace, a semicolon. Now within the curly brace, we're going to have each will have title each item in the multi-dimensional array will have title and value and you'll be able to access those or the data grid accesses those rather so let's say the first one is June 26 with this which is today oops June 26 2009 that's a string we close that off it's already closed off now we place a comma and the next item. So it can be a lot like this item. So let's just grab all of that. Actually, let's just type it out. This one will be time. It'll be the title of that one or the key. And that's going to be a string of, let's say, 5.30 p.m. Now we put another comma and the last column that's going to be in our data grid furthest to the right will be the task and that will be a string of whatever the task is. I'm going to say meet Kayla downtown for dinner. Okay so that is how you assemble each item that goes into each row of your data grid and each one of these the date the time and the task 
is going to be a column in your data grid. So now we're going to create two more of those just for the example keep it nice and short. You can have as many as you like. Let's just change this to object 2, object 3. Change the date to 27. This can be like my schedule of events, what I'm going to be doing. Just my calendar, you know. A uh, data grid is great for that. Let's make this one an AM time, maybe 8.30 AM. And this one can be 2 p.m. And this task, we'll just change change up these items and then we'll get going. Okay, now we have three items that are going to be placed into the data grid for us. Now we're going to claim a text format. So we'll just call it my text format. And this is going to be text format equals new text format. So that claims a new text format object and it has a name of my text format. Now we can give it the properties we want. So we just say my text format dot whatever property whatever value dot font let's make the font comic sans comic sans ms make sure that's an n okay now we say my text format and this text format that I'm creating right now is going to be the list items, the string items, the dates, all in blue here, whatever's in blue there. Okay, so now we're formatting these string items, or we're building the format that's going to be applied to those string items, if that makes sense. Okay, so once we get that, we're going to color the items claim 0x and a hex value of 666666 and that'll be a darker or a gray color a kind of kind of dark gray color and now let's set the my text format size dot size equals 14 so the text in the grid in those columns will be 14 pixels comic sans with this color okie dokie and that's it for that now all we have to do is create the data grid object so we say var data grid this is data grid equals new data grid and now what we're going to do is claim a list of properties that we're going to place on the data grid this dynamic data grid that we're cr creating and I'm just going to paste them in and explain each one line by line so we don't waste too much time watching me type out okay we've got all the properties and values that we want to place on our data grid set in place here and I'll explain them line by line this line the move property places the dynamic uh, data grid at certain location uh, coordinates on stage 20x 50y the width attribute sets the width of the data grid the height sets the height the row height sets the row height that each of these items will have. Each item will have a row height of 35. And I'll show you how to tweak out the sizes and what happens and how scrollers automatically appear and all that stuff in a second. And then uh, we claim the columns. Date, time, and task. And it picks those up using these item arrays when 
the data grid items get sent in. And I'll talk about that in a second. So here we claim the columns that we want. And here we can access the columns indexes to claim the width for certain columns. So the first column that holds the date will be 120 wide. Second column that holds the width, uh, sorry, that holds the time will be 70 pixels wide. And then the last column will just be the rest of the grid till we reach 480 pixels because the whole grid is 480 wide. And we claim resizable columns true. That way the user can take their mouse and reposition where the grid uh, where the grid is where each column ends and starts and then uh, you can set that to false if you don't want to allow them to be able to slide the grid columns and then we set, uh, set render style which uses our my text format here and applies it to those items each item in the list in the data grid each one of these items will have this uh, my text format applied to it and the data grid gets items added to it here finally all three of these these object items that are makes like a multi-dimensional array that gets fed into the data grid and so once we have all of that then we can just add child and this will place effectively place your dynamic data grid on stage right when you claim this line here or execute this line. Now the last thing we want to do is create a change event handler for when somebody clicks one of the items inside of our data grid because data grid items are made clickable. Okay, so that's the last little thing we'll program here and then we'll see what we have. Okay, so all we need is to claim an event listener, a change event. It's going to be on the data grid. So let's grab the data data grid's instance name here. Data grid dot add event listener. And it's going to be event dot change all caps. And let's give it a function that's going to fire off on that change event. Let's name it grid item click. Sounds like a good name to me. Let's go down a few lines and now let's write that function in. Let's claim function grid item click. This is going to be event dot event colon event close parentheses colon void open curly brace close curly brace and there's our nice grid item click function all nested up okie doke now what we're going to do in there is use our task text right here to display something. We're going to display something in the task text when they click one of our grid items. So let's put task text dot txt equals and this will have just a, a string value plus this event dot target dot selected item so you can use the selected item method here to grab what the user has clicked on the value of task right there if you wanted the value of the um, date or time that's what you would put there you could put date and that would grab the value of the date. And now we want to let's put the task first though. Task. Now we can put plus open uh, 
a set of quotes, double quotes, and uh, put backslash n, and that'll put a line break into the text field. That way we can append to it because we're going to use the append text method to put the other items in for display. Okay, so let's grab this. Actually, we have to put something here. Let's put task in all capitals. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now the next line is going to be appending text. So instead of using that text property, we're going to use append text. And this won't have an equal sign. It will just be in parentheses. And it will get appended to that text field along with that first line. And we don't want the task again. We want the date this time. It's, it's that easy to display it all in one field. Now let's make a line very similar to that one appending. Let me make sure this says date and this would say time Oops. and this would be the the time so we have task date time will all be displayed within this text field each on separate lines because we're claiming the line break there using backslash n now let's publish and see what happens. Okay, there we are. We have three items. Now, let's see how we can manipulate this with the numbers a little bit. Okay, we don't need it 200 high. Didn't need that much height for just those three items. So let's make it 120 high. Let's render out. Okay, you see what happened? If we make it shorter in its height property, then it is able to hold all three of those, then it gives us a scroll automatically, which is a nice feature of the data grid. Now if I click one, it's not updating my text field. Let's see why not task underscore txt grid item click event and then change hmm oh the text is blue there we go see so each one you click, it shows that information there. Now let's get it to where it's just right. Maybe the height would be 130. Perfect. So there you go. So you can make this thing as wide as you need to, as high as you need to, and it will give you scroller if you happen just to have you know a small amount of real estate that you're working with on your page and you can also have things happen and functions fire off when these items get clicked and their values can be sent okay so that's how you work dynamically with the data grid component flash and action script 3 we'll see you next lesson